sell them the opportunity, sell them what they want, right? Which is a good opportunity. This is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Welcome to another episode of Stay Paid. I'm Joshua Stike along with Luke Acree. And before we bring on our guest today, we'd love it if you take a minute to subscribe to Stay Paid on Apple Podcasts or Spotify if you're not already. And while you're there, drop us a review. We'll read it here on the show. This week's featured uh, actual comment. This came on YouTube, a client of Reminder Media. Her name is Denise Jascott. She says, such valuable and motivational information. I love all of your podcasts. Thank you for being so genuine and having on the most amazing speakers. Have a wonderful day. Loved Brandon's energy. So this was mm. Brandon Bornanson. Yeah, uh, his, his is doing really AI. well on YouTube as well. Yeah, so yeah. thanks, Denise. You actually commented on a couple of different of our videos. Really appreciate that. Appreciate you being a client of Reminder Media as well. Speaking of amazing speakers, our guest today is Joe Campert. Having been in the insurance industry for nine years, Joe created Redwood Agency Group from scratch in 2018, starting with only four producers, Joe and his father now run a multi-million dollar organization with over 60 plus producers and staff members. Joe's passion is helping insurance agents pursue their dreams and build a business that will impact not only their family's lives, but the lives of others as well. Joe, welcome to Stay Paid. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you, man. Hey, I'll I'll tell you, we didn't actually have four producers. We technically had like two producers because me and dad were one of, we oh, were two go. of the four. <laughs> so, but yeah, go. we started, started from the bottom. Now we're here, man. I'll tell you. It's unbelievable, you man. Yeah. I mean, I had the privilege to, um, go on a Facebook live with you in your Facebook group. Joe is just crushing it with Facebook groups. So we're going to pick his brain on how to do a, a successful Facebook group today, but there's so much knowledge that he has. I had the privilege of meeting Joe, getting connected to him through the 8% nation kind of Ooh. conference. Yeah. Cody Askins, we had on the podcast. You guys know, go back, check out his episode, but uh, Joe is just immensely talented, not only as a salesperson, but as a leader and now doing this social media advertising and networking. It's unbelievable. Joe, I would I'd love for you to share a little bit of your journey, how you grew it from literally two producers to now 60 plus. Talk to us a little bit of how you got to where you're at today. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, well, shoot, man. It, it honestly, it goes, it goes, before it goes back before Redwood really even became a thing. Right. And that's just kind of, you know, I, I always like to say this, I like to lead with a grateful and, and humble heart, right? It's, I, I was super blessed and fortunate. Um, I didn't like it back then, but just how I was raised. Right. And just so again, very blessed and fortunate to have, um, two loving parents, got an older brother. Um, and again, I didn't, I didn't like it back then. Man, was the but, older but brother looked, loving or just the parents? Uh, <laughs> so I some older brothers, they age. weren't the most loving. Yeah. You know, no. <laughs> Once we got to a certain age, it was like, okay, we need to stop fighting every day. Um, like physically, but, um, no, I, I really think it, it goes back to where it all started, which was to my, it was like my paper out in second grade. Um, I actually sent over uh, the picture to you guys too. It's just, I have some certain pictures that really, you know, they mean something to me. And you know, what's crazy is that the picture I sent over was actually, it's me and my pops. Right. So, I, on Saturday mornings, right? So when every other kid was watching cartoons, I had to put my little VHS tape in and record my cartoons because I had, uh, had papers, um, to deliver on Saturday mornings. And so I did that six days a week, literally starting in second grade. Wow. Um, I only, I only had three blocks cause I don't think they really were allowed to like make me work more than that because I was in second grade. Um, <laughs> but on, on Saturday mornings, the, the papers were too thick or they were really thick. So they were too heavy for me to carry by myself. Mm-hmm. Right. So my pops would help me deliver the papers on Saturday mornings because they had the cartoons and everything in it. Um, and then fast forward, literally from there, fast forward 20 years to where, you know, we're starting a business, um, again together. Right. And so, you know, I always like to lead with, you know, I, I just was raised right, man. And I, I think, you know, especially, and I know people see me and they're like, man, this dude's baby face. Uh, what is he like 15? It's like, well, I'm 28 now. Um, you know, and I, I know that people have their opinions on millennials, man, but dude, I was, I was super blessed and fortunate to have a, a loving family that really raised me the right way that, but it was the work ethic, man. I was always getting after it, right. Whether it was the paper route, whether it was mowing yards, um, whether it was, and we grew up in Indiana. So I was like, I'm, you know, uh, shoveling snow off the driveways. If I can, um, I worked at a farmer's market selling pulled pork and lemon shakeups, right? Like free samples of pulled pork. How often do you get free these days? Right. And yeah, so I've never heard that. I've heard the lemonade stand, but not the pulled pork stand, the, the pulled pork <laughs> baby. And that's, and, but so we did the free samples cause we sold it by the pound and all I knew, yeah. Hey, I knew it was good. I just needed them to take a bite. Right. And so, 
um, that's kind of where it all started, man. And just, you know, I think especially in insurance and really just in, in marketing and anything in general, right. It just, you've got to have that activity, right. I just hopped off another podcast before this and it was, dude, it's like activity, man. Like you just got to be active. And for me, you know, that started at a very young age for me. And so how did you um, deal kind of, how did you deal with the rejection that comes along with the activity or like walk us through a little bit of the scaling process of two to 60? Like, obviously there's a lot of trials and tribulations and the school of mm-hmm. hard knocks that happens there. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's another one there's a, there just keep going. Right. Just like, and it's kind of like when you're door knocking, right? Like if one person says no, just keep going to the next door. Cause there's always another door to knock on. Um, the big thing though is, really, and I I was just talking about this this morning as well, is taking the lessons from your losses, right? Learning that, hey, when especially when scaling, y'all, hey, what worked for me and Pops and our two people that started Redwood with us does not work for when we even have 20 people, 40 people, 60 plus people now, right? Um, And we did that in an 18 month time frame, right? So scaling very quickly, um, but also really, hey, dude, you're going to, you're going to fail. Um, And I think, for me, I've always been able to, and I know this isn't the case for everybody, but for me, it was like, man, I'm just taking my lessons from my losses and I'm just going to keep pushing forward. Right. And I'm going to keep getting better. And as long as I'm getting better, as long as I'm doing the activity, right. And, and ultimately this is how I truly believe you can scale, um, in Facebook groups, in business and what dude, just care about people, man, Mm -hmm. just care. Like, just like, Hey, when I do mess up, right. It's like, man, going to them and saying, dude, because of how much I care, I apologize but the, here's what we're going to do to get better. Right. And I think all of that really taps into just my, my heart for people, man, when you care about people and, and when you give you freaking get man. And I know you guys have felt that at reminder media, man. It's like, and when you start to give and it, it might hurt a little bit out the <laughs> gate, right. Because you're giving a lot. And then, but it's, man, I swear it comes back tenfold. It really so. does. Yeah. We'll talk a little bit about the Facebook group. Cause you have, you have quite a few, but you definitely have a really solid loyal membership and have created a really great community mm-hmm. there. So what sort of led you to want to go that route and create these groups and then talk a little bit about how you did that and how you, how you got the, the membership and the engagement going? Yeah. So um, <laughs> if anybody knows me, if you guys have ever heard anything I've, I've ever said in the past, it's so when Joe has an idea, I just I just do it. Right. And so like <laughs> when you talk sense. about activity, like I'm just like, oh, dude the insurance syndicate, man, this is freaking perfect. And I spent hours on Canva building out the content and I, I literally just did it in a day. Um, and the whole reasoning behind it, subconsciously I had been thinking about it, right? So we're PNC heavy. Um, but now obviously making a big push in the life and health side of things. And for me, it was like, you know, the rooms that I was sitting in and the conversations and the relationships that I was forming, was like, dude, what, what are we doing? Like, why is a PNC freaking person talking to a Medicare person? Right. Like I didn't even know, I thought Medicare, I called Medicare Medicaid. Mm. Right. And so, you know, the whole premise of the group really started with dude, why, why we should unite the industries. Right. Um, and, and excuse me, not the industries, the verticals within the insurance industry, but we wanted to do that in a way where it was, there was no secret sauce. Um, it's what I started my agent hangout on. So I do a networking event every single month and just no secret sauce. And, you know, from, and really, I guess I picked it up from talking with all these agents where it's like, dude, we never had the resources or the groups or the information, right? Like we do now, but there's a difference between being provided value, right. And, and being like recruited. <laughs> so, you know, for me, I was like, man, I want to unite the verticals, whether you're doing PNC, whatever it is. I truly believe that this industry is it's the best vehicle. Right. And, and again, I'm in insurance and I know you guys have a lot of entrepreneurs that are on your show. I am in insurance. Um, but man, to me, it's, man, there was no better vehicle, but dude, we're, we're driving a passenger van and some of us are just sitting in the front seat right? It's like insurance is massive, right? Yeah. And so I really wanted to bring everybody together, but do so in a way and kind of our whole MO is, you know, through transparency and collaboration, we're going to unite the industry and we, we call it disruption. We are disrupting this industry because there aren't people out there doing it, right? There's, there is still the secret sauce or, oh, I'm not going to tell them that because then they might take what, yeah, if anybody's everybody ever wants heard to me. hold the secrets close, but it's a, it's yes. actually what hurts your business. Has it helped you recruiting wise? Obviously, because now you've gone to sixty people, so you have this group of all these insurance mm-hmm. people. Have you naturally just seen people come to you from a recruiting standpoint? 
Yep. And guess where they come from? <laughs> Old Facebook, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it is literally, it's getting to the point now and it's because of how much I put out. Yeah. Um, and I, and I tell people this and anybody that's maybe like, Oh, well, you know, I'm not going to share everything for me. It's I share everything because guess what you can do. I, I'll give you everything I do. You just got to do it better than me. Right. Mm. So it's a nice little healthy competition. And that's why I share is like, dude, anybody can do this. It's not rocket science. It's how I figured it out. I'm a college dropout. Like I didn't, like I, I started as an intern in insurance and now we're obviously here. Um, but like, man, it's, you just got to do it better than me. How often are you guys um, putting out content in your Facebook group? Every day. Every day. Um, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm posting in there. So that's, and I, I guess I'll backtrack to that. When we first started, um, and this is all organic. I have not spent a dime. This is my new catchphrase. I have not spent a dime other than time. Um, so when it first started, right? Obviously I had somewhat of a following before then, but still it was kind of like, Ooh, like typically there's a PNC group. There's a life group. There's a Medicare group, right? Yeah. Not like, Whoa, why are we all like, man, all these Medicare agents and stuff, like everybody's posting and commenting and kind of collaborating. It's kind of weird. Right. For me, when that, for, I, dude, it was up to me. I was posting in there five times a day just really? to keep engaging, wow. just to keep it, just to keep it going. Like, man, I, cause I know we, we weren't there yet with the engagement. People hadn't really tapped into the disruption that we were trying to build. And then now fast forward and, and insurance syndicate, we just hit, um, we just hit over 5,000 members, which I don't know. We, we, we can, we can maybe touch on what I'm going to do for our 5,000 members. Uh, I'm getting a tattoo of the logo in places <laughs> I'm not going to describe. Uh, cause I said, and it was Merwin. Anybody that knows Tony, I said, man, if we hit 5,000 members, this was last Friday. I said, if we hit 5,000 members by Friday, we had to hit, it was 428 members. We had to grow. I'll, I'll get a tattoo on my freaking butt. <laughs> and I was like, I'm just going to do something crazy and I'll do it. <laughs> Well, of course, Tony invites like his entire friends list. We end up That's hitting it. over 5,000. That's 5, the golden nugget of, 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 yeah. of the episode. That's get what a tattoo on your butt. Butt. Yeah, get a tattoo well, on your can I, can I back up for just a second? Because you mentioned <laughs> yeah. um, you have all of these different agents, the Medicare, the PN, you have all them in this group, right? Talking yep. and sharing ideas. So how do you, because we've had this experience in our own Facebook group where we've got real estate agents, we've got insurance agents, we've got financial advisors, we've got small mom and pop shops. And it's like, the tips and things that a real estate agent would want to hear very industry specific isn't the same thing or doesn't create the same level of engagement. So yep. like where it almost does your content live from a, from a strategy standpoint that each person is sharing what they've learned? Is it more, um, uh, uh, is it bigger or is it, does it get very specific as well? Yeah, I get, I get where you're going there. Um, you know, for me, it was, that's where the unity. So the reason we're making a life and health push yeah. is because man, I do, there's only certain amount of times that you can sit next to somebody or read a certain piece of content or watch a certain piece of content and hear what they're doing in their business, even though it's a different model than mine, where it's like, but man, I like, I'm licensed to do that. Right. And so that's kind of where it came from was, when, when we're talking about the unity of it, man, we need to be doing this all. And mm -hmm. I, and I talk about this a lot, especially with our Redwood agents. And that's dude, that's again, from four to 60, you can do it all with us. Right. And so it wasn't, I didn't want you to have to go outside of Redwood to go get a, Hey, we do a lot of PNC. I'm not, we just had our record month last month. You know, we hit 1.3 million um, in PNC, which anybody knows PNC, that's not a small number by any means. Right. And now, now we're going to go higher, but it was, wow, like why, just because I'm doing this doesn't mean I can't offer this and doesn't mean I can't mm -hmm. find the right person to sit in this seat to offer this to our agents, right? And so that was kind of the backing of it where it does get a little bit more specific, but man, you start seeing that all the time and you really, I mean, even if you're maybe just like cruising subconsciously, man, you're picking up on it. And I'm like, dang, man, wait, hold on. So you're telling me in life insurance that if I sell a thousand dollar policy a year, I'm going to make over $1,200 and I make it in 48 hours. And they're like, yeah. And I was like, boom, dude. I was <laughs> Wait like, what? No wonder. What? No. I was like, no wonder my referral partners love me, man. I was like, dang, I'm sending them thousands of dollars. Gotcha. Um, and that's kind of where it started. Do you um, have but, multiple awesome. contributors now within the Facebook group where multiple people yes. are contributing? Yeah. So a uh, great tip. Um, and I'm glad that you pointed that out, man, if you really want a successful and it goes back to caring about people, but and when you care about people and you have a lot of people, you need more people um, to care. Right. And so bringing in admins and moderators within those groups, it's crucial because I will, I will not sleep um, because of how active those groups can get. Um, and anybody that's been in, a, in an active Facebook group, you know, it, right. The things they just don't turn off. Um, and, and even moderation, you're going to have people that come in that go against our values and what the whole insurance syndicate is. Right. And so, 
having people that really help you moderate that, um, booting people, whatever it is, that's huge. But yeah, we've got, um, I've got three admins in there, admin moderators. Then I've got group experts. So you can even okay. go one level, oh, wow. one level deeper. Cause that badge means something right. When they're going in and making a comment, if they're a group expert based off this, it just, it really, um, validates. Yeah. It comments. enhances the credibility of the group. Even, you know, what's interesting Correct. is, so you open it up, right? High energy, all of that activity. And I think about our Facebook group and it hasn't been the best. And the reason why I feel guilty. Sitting yeah. Here well, this. it's the reason why is <laughs> he got on his group and he posted five times a day, relentlessly just pounding, 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 not because you're trying to sell something because you see a ton of value in this, mm-hmm. you know what it can bring. You're evangelistic about it. And, and you think of all the things in your life that have failed. Right. And I think about the stuff that I've done that failed. It's always done or failed from a lack of evangelism around that thing. Yeah. Meaning you're mm-hmm. not a zealot as uh, Dan Pena says, you gotta be a zealot for that thing that you are building And it's like everything in our life that has failed, it's because we were missing that intensity level. Speak to us a little bit. You just said your biggest month, 1.3 million, right? In sales there. Speak to us a little bit about your activity from a lead generation standpoint. Um, Think about like, okay, where are you getting your leads from? How do you train people from a phone call perspective? If you're doing that or a door knocking perspective, give us a little tips on that. Man, you guys, I'm going to be beating a dead horse this whole episode. Facebook, (laughs) literally, I'm not even playing. Um, I actually just recorded some training on it where every single one of our agents, um, every single lead and referral that comes into my agency for our in-house team, right? And I think that's also something important. When you're building an organization, get be in the trenches with them, right? So the same things I'm sitting here trying to train on and and tell people to do, I'm sitting over here doing it with my people too on our in-house side of things. Right. Love that. Um, but literally it all was sourced from Facebook when you bet. And that's, it's crazy to me. And, and I really, I preach on it a lot. Y'all we're living in a virtual world, right. Mm. In sales, you know, you talk about it. Sales is just a talk path in my opinion. Right. And so I just have scripts. I say, follow the script. Once you get comfortable with the script then make the script kind of your own, don't tweak it too much. Right. Cause we know it's proven it works. But then there's going to be certain things that Austin's going to say or that Alex is going to say that doesn't Joe doesn't talk like that. But really, dude, I mean, dead serious. I would source it from Facebook. I go I would find him in a comment. I would get tagged in something, whatever that is, just because, again, people know that Joe cares about people. um, And that's kind of your your fan club. Right. So when you find people that you resonate with, that you want to do business with, that you are currently doing business with have them promote you, right? Have them tag you and say, Hey man, you should work with Joe. I am too. And he's awesome. Right. Or this, this, and this. Would you literally just so I understand tactic wise, would you literally Mm -hmm. ask your friends promote me? Yes. Okay. I just want to point that out. I figured that's what you were saying, but I think a lot of people don't do that. They don't want to be that person who's asking, Hey, promote me out on Facebook, promote me out on Instagram. But I agree with you. It's like, why not? They, if they really are your friends, they would love to. Bingo. And, and I love that you said this too, because that took me right here you always have to lead with the va- do something right by them first. I'm not going to ask them to just tag me and promote me if they haven't. Hey, Joe's amazing to work with, but we've never worked together. Like that's not value driven in my opinion, right? Mm-hmm. That's not, that's falsified information. Um, for me, it's man, if I, if I am able to connect with you and I'm able to make an impact again, whether that's in business, whether that's through just friendship or relationship, whatever that is connecting them with somebody over here. I, I love deal brokering right now. It's like the best, it's like, Oh dude, I don't, but, guess what? I have really good friends. And that's been the cool part about syndicate is that people talk with me and Hey, it's not a one size fits all just because Redwood is I'm biased. I love Redwood and we offer all the options. Doesn't mean it's not the best or that it is the best for everybody. Mm. Right. But the really cool thing is when you're able to to lead with that value and you've been able, Hey, you know what? Ah, no, you know what, but let me, let me put you right here and let me connect you guys. And so that's been the really cool thing, but I would never ask somebody to promote me, to tag me. Um, and really now it's gotten to the point where you, you start with the ask, right? It's just like how you ask for referrals at least just ask for it. Right. And then once you ask enough times, those refer, I mean, the referrals really just start to come in to where it's like, man, I I don't even have to ask. Um, even like the Facebook posting, I had to start with five posts every single day to keep it going. Mm. But now I can bounce to a conference for a week and I come back and it's like our group grow, it grew over a hundred something members yeah, and I wasn't even there. Right. Yeah, um, awesome. So always leave with that value in education for sure. We'll talk about the sales side of it then. Cause you, you mentioned uh, in the, in kind of our pre-note, this idea of selling the opportunity versus selling the product. Uh, mm-hmm. Talk about that. So, you know, for me and 
especially again, this is, this is very specific to insurance. Um, but I think it's relatable across all industries in my opinion is that too many people are focused on, on dollar signs. Um, and for me, and this is, I'm actually stealing this from uh, Grant Cardone, right? Life is a commission, right? And so when I talk about the Redwood opportunity, you know, we have what's called our house of dreams, right? And this house of dreams is really, it's, it's, and it, it, I want to say this too, for some reason, it's like childish to dream. Like people associate dreams with children. And I'm like, so like, is it childish of me to still have dreams? Right. I mean, I know I didn't make it to the NBA, but like I can still have dreams. Right. <laughs> and so that's kind of what we do. And and we really, we use insurance as the vehicle, as the opportunity to get them to their dream. Right. And so it, I'm the weird guy. I'm passionate about insurance, right? I love insurance. I've been wanting to be in insurance since I was in second grade. Cause that's what my dad was doing when I was, when we were doing the paper out together. Right. But really it's it, insurance doesn't have to be your passion, but it is an opportunity regardless of the product insurance itself. Right. And the numbers don't lie, but it, man, that opportunity can get you to where you are, like what you want to do, what you are passionate about. And that's something we really preach is I don't care the product, man. Um, as long as you're, as long as you're doing good, right. And you're, you're not really cheating or, or doing, um, skipping or cutting corners, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a big thing for us, right? It, it doesn't matter the product, right? It's all about that opportunity. And when you give somebody the right opportunity, man, it, the product doesn't matter. Right. Cause like I said, sales is just a talk. It's, it's a talk back. Yeah. Man. I and love so, that. It's so true. Especially if you're ever re- like you're recruiting team members, you know, this is just the vehicle, right? Reminder yes. media is just the vehicle. Your agency is just the vehicle. And I remember from 8% cause we were both there. One of the things that stood out to me from Ed Milet's keynote is about how the great companies are so truly selling happiness. Mm. And he goes, think about McDonald's. It's called the happy meal. <laughs> like they don't, they don't right. call it the cheeseburger meal. Right. They don't call it the meal that comes with the toy. They call it the happy meal because they're selling the, the happiness Coke, right? They're selling the smile. They're selling Give the, the happiness. Smile, yeah. yeah. And, and you just go, oh yeah, that's so powerful that in your business today, ask yourself, you know, if you think like you're a real estate agent listening to this, are you selling them a house? Or are you selling them a place where they're going to live out the life of their dreams, their, dream, their home, right? right? The yes. place where they're going to make their memories live and raise their kids or whatever it is at that stage of the life that that client's in. Like what piece of it are you selling? What piece of it are you tapping into? Because that yes. evokes emotion. And it's so true from a stat standpoint People move based upon emotion. Mm -hmm. That's why they move. And I'm not talking about literal moving. I'm talking about like taking action. (laughs) Although it applies to literal moving. (laughs) Right. Well, I want to, I want to, I want to go back to that real quick because, you know, the product versus opportunity. Sometimes people get so caught up selling the product that people get so they miss the opportunity because they're like, oh man, it's like, it's all product, 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 right? You're shoving product down their freaking throat they miss the opportunity because of that. Right. And so that's another big thing for us is that we're, we're talking about big picture here. We're talking about your dreams. We're talking about, Hey, where do you want to be? Like, in fact, what, what do you even, what do you even care about? Right. And it's so weird. Like when I'm interviewing people, I ask them like, Hey, like, what is like, what's, what's, who are you? Like, I, I actually want to know who you are. And they're like, they're coming into this thing, like a business interview. They don't want to turn their camera on. Right. They're just going in to get a product. Yeah. Very and for me, we Yes. And so it's it, sometimes people will miss out on that opportunity if you're not, if, if you're just shoving that product down the throat. Right. And yeah. so I know that can, that can be diversified across all industries too. It's not just insurance, sell them the opportunity, sell them what they want. Right. Which is a good opportunity. hundred percent. So man, you're 28 have accomplished so much already. Right. And I mean, I can tell you're just going to keep crushing it. Like your energy is off the charts. I freaking love it. Your activity is off the charts and you're not just speaking like you're doing, I'm watching the stuff you're doing. It's really mind boggling to me as I'm looking at you from the outside. Um, but I'd love to hear what you would tell an agent that's getting into the business that's struggling or someone out there, maybe they're not in insurance, but we all you know, are struggling trying to build our businesses. Mm-hmm. What, what would you tell them? What advice would you give them? Uh, I'm going to tell a story. Can I tell a story? Absolutely. So, so when Redwood started, um, and when I said, dude, when we were broke, I'm saying like, we didn't even technically when Redwood started, we didn't even have an office yet. Um, because we couldn't afford any of the offices that were available. And we're actually still in the, this is our first, this is our main office, right? This is when we finally got in. 
Um, but I, I, I like to tell this story because I think there's a lot of testimony to it because guys, you're hearing all the good stuff. <laughs> I promise you, we did not start here. Um, and so for anybody new that's getting in, especially for those that are tied on dollars, right? If you've got capital and definitely makes it a little bit easier, I would suggest that maybe have a little bit in the, in the bank, right? As you're getting ready to start a scratch business. Dude, we didn't even know how to make our phones work the first day that Redwood started, <laughs> right? And then that was, but that was the only thing we could afford. We couldn't afford anything else and we didn't know what we were doing, right? So we just downloaded, we went and got, um, it was called, it was through Data Man Group was where we got our list. And so we went through just whatever it was, home X dates. We downloaded a list of like, freaking seven, 8,000 names and phone numbers, ran them through the DNC, right? Just scrub them, make sure they're not on the do not call list and just hit the phones, right? And that was, I'm telling you, if you can do that, right? And and again, we go back to, man, I I didn't necessarily like how my parents were raising me at the time, but now, man, that was invaluable freaking experience for me. Same thing that, hey, you know what? If everything hits the fan, I can still go download a list of names and numbers for like $400 and freaking make sales. Right. And so that is, I like to tell that story because that is where we started. Sometimes you don't have to have the beautiful website, the beautiful office, the freaking huge team, right. To sometimes you got to start it by yourself sometimes. Right. And so with that, that is how we literally built Redwood for our first 18 months. Again, I mean, there were some months, man, where it was, shoot, Joe, you better make this sale, dude. Otherwise we're like, we're not making payroll. Like, I mean, it was literally down to the wire like that. And that was all off cold calling. Um, so I like to share that, especially with new agents is man, outbound activity. Yeah. Regardless of having the, everything else, right. All the bells and whistles, you don't really need it. Right. To find success. Yeah. It's so true. I mean, the echoes of our own journey in your story as well. We should post the the first reminder media website just to give everyone, just to (laughs) prove that what Joe is saying here is correct. We got to post a garage picture with it too. Like, Craziness. No, you're hundred percent right. If you're willing to do the outbound activity, no matter what happens in your business, you could start tomorrow. You control. Yep. Yeah. And you can bring it back up to speed. Uh, talk a little bit about, you know, how you deal with failure then, because I know you mentioned before how, you know, you're learning from failures. What, what would you say has been uh, uh, maybe a failure that you've gone through in growing this business that you've learned from? How do you deal with that? Um, man, making... Uh, what would be the right word to describe this? I would say making more calculated decisions when it comes to technology, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll pivot here a little bit. Um, Technology has been a big challenge for us and I'm totally vulnerable on this. Um, We have made, we'll call them poor decisions. I mean, it's worked and everything like that, right? But we have made, in in hindsight, we've made very poor decisions when it comes to technology moves, Um, whether that's your CRM, which again, in any industry, you need a freaking CRM. I don't care. You need something to be able to track your prospects, follow up automations, drip campaigns, all that good stuff. Has it been not choosing the wrong CRM or not choosing a CRM fast enough? It was... It was not testing the waters before we moved an entire organization to it Um, because now people depend on us. Right. And so when in the decisions that we made, when there was just four of us in this office, that was easy. Right. If it messed up, it's like, hey, you can walk down the hall and say, hey, guys, like we're we're not going to use that anymore. Right. Um, To where now those decisions that we make in this leadership role impact an entire organization. Yeah. Right. And so and, and, and I think that applies not even that's that's us personally with tech and and tech and you guys know it, it's ever evolving, right? Like there's always something new. And so really just making a very calculated decision, um, but making that decision for ourselves to go test those waters before we subject an entire organization to it. Mm. And that's something now that we've really, you know, we had to learn it the hard way, but now it's like, man, moving forward, you just know, right? Like you don't know what you don't know until you freaking go through it. Um, But that was a big thing for us, especially if you're sitting in a leadership role, like your decisions impact everybody. So, yeah, it is so true, man. (laughs) I can think of our uh, common mistakes there. So yeah, you don't realize the ripple effect. Uh, Jeff, the CEO of LinkedIn uh, shared one time, he said, people don't understand that you just in this, when a business grows, how more complex every decision yes. becomes. And it's the same decision when it was one or two people, but that same decision when you have 10 people mm. is so much more complicated because of the ripple mm-hmm. effect uh, that happens. It's so funny though, you shared in, you know, in the beginning, you know, one of the things, Brandon Dawson, a guy that I follow, um, he's actually a partner, I think with Greg Cardone. He uh, does mm-hmm. a lot of investing, private equity type stuff, but he shared that the truly, truly successful people, if you want to be successful, um, they basically learn how to have no time between idea and execution. 
It's yeah. like their ability to have speed between idea and execution. And if you think of what experience teaches you, like the experience you've gained from going through all this, it's just taught you how to take an idea and implement it effectively really, yes. really quickly. Well, and, and if you're not breaking things, then you're not growing, right? Like if I'm still sitting in it, like, yeah, I mean, of course we're going to be on the same tech stack as we were freaking three years ago, if we weren't growing, yeah. right. Cause why change it if it, it wasn't broken, <laughs> but when you get to a certain size and that, that is definitely a, a, a lesson that we've learned is, man, if you're not breaking things, if you're not failing, right. Then you're not growing. Yeah. Right? And that's, Facebook's and that, poster, like Facebook had posters up, break stuff faster. It isn't, it right? That's a stuff. core value. No. Stuff, <laughs> you gotta be willing to suck. If you're not you willing to suck, to suck, then yeah. you will never make it. Well, Joe, thank you so much for coming on the episode today. Please uh, share with the listeners uh, whatever you want to promote about your Facebook group or, or anything else you want to let them know how to connect with you. Yeah, so Joe Camper, uh, Redwood Agency Group. So we're based out of Austin, Texas. Um, we do operate in over 30 different states. Um, so love to help people. We've got agents all over the country too. So you, I'm sure you have somebody local there. Redwood Agency Group, check us out online. Um, also, but the big one, especially if you want to have more of a personal interaction with me is um, the Insurance Syndicate. So that is our Facebook group. We're growing over 100 members a week right now, all organic, right? Not a dime other than time. And I think that's, dude, that's the beautiful thing about when you help people, when you care about people, it just, it grows by itself, right? Yeah, man, <laughs> to where yeah. I can hop on a podcast, I'm, I'm going to pop off this and I'll probably have comments. I'll have members joining all this good stuff. Um, and that's all from just value driven, value driven education, content, transparency. And the, the hey, here's the biggest piece honesty. <laughs> Isn't that sad? It's like few and far between that. It's like, wow, dude, like you're so honest. And I'm like, that, that, that's a unique uh, differentiator. Yeah, yeah, unique. <laughs> <laughs> that's so sad. Uh, but thank you guys. All right, thank Joe. Yes. So much thank you so much on. for coming on. Thank you all for listening. You can uh, get the show notes for this episode along with the links uh, to uh, everything that Joe mentioned there over at staypaidpodcast.com. If you enjoyed this episode and want to show your support, the first way is to ask you to head on over to Apple Podcasts, drop us a five-star review and a comment to let us know how we're doing. And the best way to help out the show is just to share this with a friend. If you want to get hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remindermedia.com. And of course, you can find us on social media. We are at Stay Paid Podcast. For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Stike. Guys, I'm Luke Acree. If that episode doesn't fire you up to get out there and put some activity into action, I don't know what will. You've got to get out there. Frequency creates greatness. Here's my action item for all of you that I think can be really, really tangible. All of you are serving clients right now and you have a sphere right now, are you asking them to promote you, right? You've delivered the value, you've, you've interacted with them, you've given to them, you gotta ask them to promote you because it teaches them how to give you referrals. You all of a sudden get your name out there in more ways, you become the connector. It makes sure that you're actually keeping in touch with them to deliver value. The difference between top producers and mediocre producers is top producers take action. So take action on that today. 